there are different types of iron which may include the following we have pig iron cast iron wrought iron and steel kindly stay on to know the differences between these types of iron this remains your kenyan teacher and we begin with the pig iron welcome we presented a video earlier on on extraction of iron metal and we informed you that the iron that is obtained from the blast furnace is called pig iron now pig iron is 95 percent iron it has 4% carbon and some small amounts of other impurities which include silicon, phosphorus, manganese and sulfur. So dear Lana, that is what it means to talk about pig iron. We now proceed to cast iron and we are saying that cast iron is just pig iron there's no difference between pig iron and cast iron only that when you run pig iron into molds then you obtain what we call cast iron now cast iron has the following features one it has a lower melting point than pure iron because of the impurities that are there in pig iron from which it is obtained. Cast iron is hard but brittle which means it easily breaks and this is due to the high carbon content. We've just talked about 4% carbon. Cast iron also has very little tensile strength and it cannot be welded. Cast iron is therefore used to make objects that require less stress. These objects that require very little stress may include Bunsen burner bases, drain pipes, stoves, lamp posts, and others. Let us now proceed on to the third type of iron, which is wrought iron. Wrought iron is now almost pure iron. Wrought iron is made by heating pig iron in a furnace that has been lined with iron 3 oxide which we commonly call hematite now let's see what happens that makes wrought iron to be almost pure iron one the oxygen in the hematite oxidizes carbon and sulfur remember these are some of the impurities that we had listed to be present in pig iron. So these two are oxidized to carbon 2 oxide and sulfur 4 oxide respectively which then escape as gases. The equation for the oxidation is as follows. Iron 3 oxide which is hematite reacts with carbon that is an impurity in pig iron we are able to get iron in liquid state which now is pure and carbon 2 oxide escapes as gas this equation is balanced with a 3 on carbon a 2 on iron and a 3 on carbon 2 oxide now when it comes to sulfur the iron 3 oxide or hematite would react with sulfur 
an impurity in pig iron to get iron in liquid form which is now purer and sulfur for oxide gas. We balance this with a 2 on our hematite, a 3 on impurity sulfur, 4 on iron, and 3 on sulfur for oxide. Now, apart from removal of carbon and sulfur from pig iron to obtain wrought iron as dictated by these two equations, phosphorus and silicon impurities, which are also in pig iron, are again converted to phosphates and silicates, which are removed as a slag. So we obtain wrought iron, which now is purer than pig iron, because we have removed some of these impurities. Now wrought iron is soft but tough. It also has a higher melting point than cast iron, and this time we can weld we can forge and we can even hammer wrought iron without breaking. Now wrought iron is used to make nails, bolts, chains, ornamental gates, and electromagnets. Let us now move on to steel as the last type of iron. Steel is made from pig iron as well. To obtain steel, some of the carbon is removed through conversion into either carbon 2 oxide or carbon 4 oxide. This carbon is removed in a variety of ways. We have the first method that we call Bessemer process and the common method used is basic oxygen process. So learners, we now want to take you through how the basic oxygen process takes place. Basic oxygen process is carried out in a tilting furnace. This furnace is tilting about the pivot at this point. It appears like a large concrete mixture. The walls are made of steel that has been lined with calcium oxide. So below is our diagrammatic representation of the tilting furnace where basic oxygen process is taking place. Remember, the sole purpose of doing this is to reduce the carbon content of pig iron. Molten pig iron, here we are, is mixed with steel scrap in the furnace. A high pressure jet of oxygen is then blown into our mixture. So the oxygen that we are bringing on board reacts with carbon in the pig iron oxidizing it to carbon 2 oxide and carbon 4 oxide which escape as gases. Now when it comes to sulfur, the contaminating sulfur in pig iron is also oxidized to sulfur 4 oxide which again escape as a gas. On the other hand, we also have impurities of silica and phosphorus. So these, that is silica and phosphorus, are going to react with our lining. Remember, our lining is calcium oxide. So the silica and phosphorus in the pig iron react with the calcium oxide lining to form slag, which floats on top of the molten steel. From the way steel is obtained from pig iron, we can conclude that steel is an alloy of iron and carbon. 
with percentage carbon content ranging from 0.1% to 1.5%. Now, steel that contains iron and carbon only, we usually call them carbon steel. So our table below summarizes the various types of carbon steel, their properties and uses. Remember, carbon steel is containing only carbon in various percentages and iron. So let's have a look at these types of carbon steel. We have the first one called soft steel or low carbon steel. This has between 0.1% to 0.2% carbon content. It is soft, low tensile strength, and is easily welded. We use it to make wires, nails, and chains. Then we have the mild steel or the medium carbon steel with carbon content of between 0.2 to 0.5%. It is moderately hard, can be welded, and it's used to make car bodies, chains, shafts, and electric pylons. We then have the hard steel or high carbon steel. Percentage content of carbon is between 0.5 to 0.7. This steel is quite hard and can only be welded with care. It is used for making springs, train wheels, chisels, razor blades, and screws. And lastly, we have very high steel or very high carbon steel, which has percentage carbon content of between 0.7 to 1.5. This is very hard and is therefore used for making rock drills, railway lines, bridges, and saws. We now continue to steel that has been blended with other metals. These are called alloy steels. As far as alloy steel is concerned, we are saying that some steel contain other metals and some carbon, but this time less than 0.5%. So this kind of steel are called alloy steel and we present three examples beginning with stainless steel. Now stainless steel contain 18% chromium and another 8% of nickel. Stainless steel is tough and the most important part is that it does not rust. So we therefore use it to make cutlery, we use it to make surgical equipment and car bumpers. Next, alloy steel is tungsten steel, which contains 5% tungsten. Tungsten steel is very tough, hard, and gets tougher as temperatures increase. So we therefore use it to make high-speed cutting tools, which get hotter as the cutting process continues. And our last alloy steel is manganese steel, which contains 13% manganese. Manganese steel is tough, it is hard and springy. So we use it to make drill bits. We also use it to make rock breaking machinery and springs. Dear learners, with that, We've come to the end of our rather long video where we have taken ourselves through the various types of iron and their uses. Thank you so much for your time and we wish you all the best in your revision.